I've grown up watching Cartoon Network since 1999 and Nickelodeon since 1999. Hard to believe I was able to watch such two gems of my childhood for the first time in my life, but I did. Now, let me just say that I'm okay with mergers to some extent. But as I grew older over the years, and especially now, I am starting to hate a merger. And the only reason why I would be against a merger like this, which was first reported by Axios, which I'll read in a moment along with priority, is why competition is becoming obsolete. Because TV media companies like Warner Brothers Discovery is doing unethical practices by not renting the movie and TV show properties properties they own to other companies to use like Netflix, Hulu, or even Hulu TV. Instead, they want to liquidate off more assets that they don't want anymore. I've seen it last time when David Slavsoff shut down CNN Plus for the new streaming service for CNN. Because in this merger just happened over a year ago back in April 8th, 2022. And truth be told, I wasn't okay with the first decision that he made on this, which still disappoints me to this day. But during the WBD's early months, they were very good on making the amount of money in 2022 throughout the past eight months before the beginning of 2023. But since this last month of 2023 now, they are talks to merge the two companies together. Warner Bros. Discovery CEO Dave Slasov met this Paramount Global CEO, CEO Bob Beckish on Tuesday in New York City to discuss a possible merger. The, com- the combination would co- create a news and entertainment behemoth that would likely trigger her industry con- consolidation. Sam's Love also has spoken to Sherry Redstone, who owns Paramount's parent company, about a deal. WBD's market value was around $29 billion as of Wednesday, while Paramount's was just over $10 billion, so any merger would not be of equals. The meeting between Saslav and Makish, which sources say lasted several hours, took place at Paramount's headquarters in Times Square. The duo discussed ways their companies could complement one another. For example, each company's main streaming service, Paramount Plus and Max, could merge to better rival Netflix and Disney Plus. It's unclear whether WBD would buy Paramount Global or its parent company, National News and Sync. But a source familiar with the situation says that both options are on the table. WBD is set to have hired bankers to explore the deal. Well, since they seem to have hired the bankers to explore the deal, I actually really hope that these bankers tell Dave Slasov to not buy Paramount Global as it can and will hurt the television animation industry even way more than it already has since current has currently since Warner Brothers Discovery shut down Cartoon Network Studios and missed around the Turner Broadcasting IP library in mid-2023 since Warner Brothers Discovery pushed Cartoon Network's schedule lineup to have an Adult Swim air at 5 p.m. instead of its normal time, 8 p.m. The UBD could use its international distribution footprint to boost Paramount's franchises, while Paramount's children's programming assets could be essential to WBD's long-term streaming ambitions. CBS News could be combined with CNN to create a global news powerhouse. CBS's crime dramas such as NCIS and Criminal Minds could be combined with Investigation Discovery and Tube TV. CBS Sports footprint could be combined with WBD's, for example, CBS and WBD's Turner Sports currently share TV rights for March Madness. 
as an avid TV news viewer, while it would be great to have a global news powerhouse, it's most certainly not needed. Because for one, CNN was and still is already a global news powerhouse since June 1st, 1980 in the cable media industry. One that already grew larger all around the world in its early years. The same for CBS News. CBS's news division started on September 18, 1927. It too already has been a global news powerhouse, even more since its big break in their news coverage of World War II. So in reality, a combined global news powerhouse is once again most certainly not needed. And CBS's crime drama should only remain on CBS, not investigating Discovery. Neither should it air on True TV. Plus, just because CBS Sports already has a long term deal with original Turner Broadcasting owned property, Turner Sports, which involves Turner Broadcasting groups like TNT and TBS, to air March Madness, meaning that. It would be good for both Paramount Global and Warner Brothers Discovery to merge into one unit. The Axios article continues on to say that Paramount is under enormous pressure to find a strategic buyer or partner or buyer. As it's starting down, staring down a month in depth, the firm's stock jumped 12% earlier this month following a report from Huck that Sky Dance Media and River Capital were eyeing a potential deal to put to buy a majority stake in NAI. Okay, well, since it's in a mountain of death, just sell the company instead of merging it. I have no idea why David and Bob, who had these talks, think it's a good idea to merge. If Sky Dance Media or Redbird Capital Partners are eyeing a potential deal, to buy a majority stake of Mashable Amusements and sell Mashable Amusements to one of them because I think I would rather have Nickelodeon to remain a competitor network rather than a partner to Cartoon Network. One source familiar with the discussion say, says the, the strategy being considered mirrors for the blueprint for prior mergers. When merging with Scripps in 2018 and then Warner Media in 2022, Slashoff kept the score to each team in place while retaining and creative talent leaders from the companies he acquired. Executives are confident that the deal would receive regulatory approval despite DC's anti active antitrust climate, notably on virus discovery does its own broadcast network which would clear an easier path and would a combination with a company like NBC or Comcast. The tax division used to merge Warner Media and Discovery expires next year, which would legally allow the EPD to explore up another deal. Slash have told its investors last month that the company's cost-cutting measures and debt reduction now put it in a position to allocate more capital toward growth opportunities. No, the executives are wrong. It should not receive regulatory approval and hopefully Washington DC's government antitrust law is put into good use if Paramount Global and Warner Discovery are slowly merging. I hope that a tax provision that allows the mergers is going to expire before Warner Bros. Discovery makes a huge breach of collateral damage involving Paramount Global. This annoying error stage of capital capitalism is just wrong and it needs to be stopped. Talks between WBD and Paramount are still early and may not ultimately result in deal, but given the acceleration of core cutting and the growing Erogement of big tech and media, neither company can remain on the sidelines for long. Warner Brothers Discovery and Paramount wouldn't be 
in debt in the first place. If they just focused on actually lowering the pro streaming service prices and not cancel any more of these shows. Also, had they just made a deal seven months earlier with Writers Guild of America from the start in the first place instead of caring so much about the streaming content itself, then both Bakus and Slaslav, most likely David Slaslav, would have been smarter enough to make a straightforward decision to accept this deal, and both of these legacy TV media companies wouldn't have gone in depth right now. And as for Variety, they said, terms of a possible merger of the companies could not be learned. Both companies have enlisted bankers, but the status of the talks are described as very preliminary. As the end of the Q3, Paramount Global reported long-term debt of $15.6 considerably less than WBD, whose debt load stood at $43.5 billion, but in terms of the market value, Warner Bros. Discovery is the bigger fish. With a ma market capitalization of $28.4 billion as of close of trading December 20th, compared with $10.3 billion for Paramount Global. Just because it was primarily for Bob Bankish and David Snipes up to talk about if this merger partnership would be a great idea is completely nonsensical. Not to mention that both are in depth, and this merger would make the soon to be combined TV media companies to lose even more depth and would have filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy, which is something that no Nickelodeon and Cartoon Network viewers, such as myself, want to see happen if they illegally merge. One Paris Discovery and Paramount would be looking to pull the access, which span TV, film, sports, and streaming to gain greater scale and operational efficiencies. Specifically, WBD and Paramount would have an interest in combining their Max and Paramount Plus premium streaming services to better compete with the likes of Netflix and Disney, Disney Plus and Hulu. No, that's the reason they got into this mess in the first place. Dave Slasov got into this mess by focusing too much more time on Max, still boring name by the way, and not enough more time to focus on providing new shows for Cartoon Network to air without having to outright cancel a new program, giving it at least a 10 year chance. Like Time Warner then formerly named Warner Media did when they let Cartoon Network ran Ed and Eddie, Rico Show, Adventure Time, The Racing World of Gumbo, Teen Titans Go, Uncle and Grandpa, and Steven Universe during those eras for a long period of time. Redstone has been in talks to sell her shares in NAI, according to multiple reports. Then it goes on to say the speculation is that a buyer of Redstone's and an AI stake would be interested in covering up Paramount Global into pieces, separating the studio group from the Lake CTV media business. Meanwhile, Paramount Management has considered laying up more than 1,000 staffers in early 2024 to cut costs. And lastly, that sources say Warner Brothers Discovery senior executives felt like they had to move sooner rather than later to engage in discussions with Paramount Global after the reports about Sky Dance's interest in buying out Redstone's and AI stake. These people don't actually understand how to run a Blake CTV media business because if all they do is that they only put their entire focus on streaming media and not TV media more, then these TV media CD CEOs are in fact completely out of touch with reality, thus leaving the Lakesea Cartoon Network and Nickelodeon high and dry in the dust. And if I was the owner of a legacy TV media corporation, I would highly focus on both streaming media and TV instead of just focusing on one thing that makes money. 
both Bakish and Sansa are running a separate TV media corporation that indeed immediately has debt, no doubt about it. But that doesn't mean that they should merge the two institutions. It really does nothing when you are a greedy CEO who's just outright canceling show after show after show from Cartoon Network. Like, I understand Warner Bros. Discovery wanted to restructure, but canceling shows that people wanted to watch on their own times just gonna make Cartoon Network very unprofitable, which is practically why, in my opinion, that Dave Science Up was planning to discuss a possible wrongful merger with Paramount Global instead of doing what he should have eternally focused on regarding the streaming media, which is which again is focusing on providing both TV and streaming content. The same goes for Bob Gap Backish, whose Paramount Plus decided to outright cancel iCarly after it was doing very extremely well for three seasons and should have just served for four seasons. And Paramount Plus also purged all of its Nickelodeon shows from that streaming media service. Like, this is what I mean when I said that both CEOs should have focused more on TV and streaming media rather than just streaming. And let me tell you, plenty of people took notes online. This means this means nothing, and it will only bring more layoffs and cut productions. Do we people learn nothing from the mergers? Yeah, I know. Totally agree. Isn't it? Isn't one person owned by Discovery the same CEO that turned HBO Max into Max? Cancel ton shows and was quoted in saying that TV shows cost too much money to make and not worth it. So are they really focusing on reality TV only? My answer to the first to this first question: Discovery Inc. is no longer in existence. Warner Media is now called Warner vs. Discovery since 2022. And my answer to the second question is yes. David Slasov, the CEO of Warner Bros. Discovery, he still this the one making the decisions that led to the cancellations of the shows that were made during the pre Warner Media era and was going gonna be released as planned. What's your relationship with all these four companies and why do they need to monopolize everything? I guess you're talking about Nickelodeon and Cartoon Network as the two of the four companies, but from what I can say is that I haven't seen nor heard about any relationship between them. That does not feel right. You damn right it doesn't. And of course, there's going to be some disingenuous tone deaf people who care more about the stupid crossovers that aren't going to ever happen rather than actually caring about saving Nickelodeon and Cartoon Network from impending doom, as well as, of course, saving the hardworking writers and the voice actors from losing their gigs and layoffs by layoffs and continuously cutting shows for no apparent lack of reason. That's why we're all actually getting, not crossovers. Does this mean we finally get a Dexter's Laboratory and Jimmy Neutron collab? No, they are not doing it. Please don't be so ignorantly naive. Two goats, bring back all the shows too. And they're not reviving old shows. Sorry, but that's the truth when it comes to TV media corporation mergers. Nick also is probably three going to be saying though. You know the Leafs Matrix. If you were smart enough to understand fully on how bad this would be if these mergers happened at all, because you don't seem to care about the future of people's livelihoods that are at stake, then someday you'll come to a conclusion when you understand that certain things will never happen no matter how much you want it to. Cartoon Network and Nickelodeon are rivals. And it should remain that way, because competition is not bad for business. If 
adventure time. I currently no way. Ugh. Reading that smug response means to me that Mike Dude doesn't care if two of my favorite childhood networks are going to be heading towards extinction if this merger goes through. Because all we were getting, as this person told you, is animation X ca cancellation, which only means that Nickelodeon and Cartoon Network have no choice but to cancel most shows rather than making a crossover, which also put the animation industry at a disadvantage. What and why is this merger for? Another streaming platform expansion with an ex six existing library? What a blow to be seen. Corporate assets to be written off most probably and sacrificed. Who will control whom and why would antitrust laws allow this? Because our government is not very good at enforcing it due to anonymous lobbyists taking a hold of them. And also, the Telecommunications Act of 1996 is to blame for the soon to be unlawful merger of Warner Bros. Discovery and Paramount Global if that comes to fruition. The uh, Tau 1996 needs to be appealed by the United States government immediately if executives on both TV media corporations came to a dumb agreement. Does this make Nick better or Cartoon Network worse? Both. It makes it worse because for Cartoon Network, it already has its ITP changed around by the terrible decisions of David Slatsov, the CEO of Warner Bros. Discovery. As for Nickelodeon, some people say Nickelodeon. Some people say may die by 2025, but if this merger doesn't go through this upcoming year ahead, then it will thrive. Plus, I'm hoping what people are saying about its final airing is actually a false rumor, because I don't want Nickelodeon to go. No more healthy competition. Rip the cartoon industry. Yeah, I feel the same way. Ah, yes. Let's let the guy who ruined Dark Network and HBO have a swing at Nickelodeon too. Why not? Not if y'all can prevent this by going to the Warner Brothers Discovery headquarters to protest. Bruh, can everything stop being swallowed up by these biggest, biggest companies? Yeah. There won't be a competition if everything is owned by the same three big companies. It's a merger. The two companies are actually just going to be merging into merging under one company. But I digress. If WB merge, WB and Perma merge, Cartoon Oak and Nickelodeon could be under the same ownership, reshaping the landscape of children's entertainment. Again, this merger would make assumed to be combined TV media company lose even more debt and would have filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy, so I don't want this to happen.